the hell were you at? He went to the bathroom. Yeah, went to the bathroom real quick. I said, have you ever played 2K? <laughs> I just like some stuff out of 2K. <laughs> to come so I can uh, That's start. Right. That's right. He's got a new t-shirt apparently. <laughs> the, when he comes in, I bet he's got a brand new t-shirt. He's going to be looking. Girl. <laughs> Look at him. He's got it. <laughs> there he <laughs> goes. Hey, there we go. All right, guys, I know we're, uh, we're live streaming this press conference as well. Um, firstly, I want to thank you guys for turning up this week. It's a tremendous turnout from the press. It's been a brilliant two weeks, Madison Square Garden last week, MGM Grand this week. Of course, we want to thank them as well. Um, really proud of Devin Haney, Bill, and, and the team because... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, probably a year ago, a little bit more, 15 months, we were struggling for a bit of direction. You know, I felt that people were avoiding Devin Haney and they didn't want to fight him unless they were overpaid effectively. And I want to also thank the zone for not just investing in Devin Haney, but investing in the opposition to make sure we get the fights that we need. And over the last 12 months, he's gone Gamboa, Linares and Jojo Diaz. That's the best resume of any lightweight out there in, in, in a recent year or more. And although we give respect to George Cambosas for the standout victory against Teofimo Lopez, I really feel like this last year has been incredible. And I think we also need to remember that Devin Haney is 23 years of age. Um, and his maturity in the ring, his ring IQ, is you know that of a 32-year-old in his prime. Because at times in that fight tonight, through three or four rounds, for a lot of people it would have got very messy. They could have unraveled. But he kept his composure, he controlled the complete middle stages of, of the, the fight. And I know he won't be fully happy with his, with his performance, but he's just, every time he steps in there, it's a performance beyond his years. And, you know, as a, a Brit promoting in America, I'm really, really proud that Devin and Bill chose us and believed in us because it means a lot to have such a great talent. I feel like the best young talent in American boxing as part of our team. And we are a great team, you know, down to Devin and Bill do an amazing job. Ben Davison, all the training team. Church, of course, who is the standout star of, uh, of Team Haney. And um, I want to thank everybody, and, and especially the media, and as I said, the zone as well. And I feel like he has an incredible future. Of course, we'll talk about the, the next step, and, and for us, it's only one step, and that's George Cambosis. And I think we're one of the few that will go to Australia. Um, and when he does, I believe he'll become undisputed champion. And to do that on a stage like that and come back is the kind of move and the kind of fight that will truly make Devin a global star. So we're going to go to the floor for questions for the champion. Yeah, this is uh, Sip Brown uh, with uh, Don Trey's Boxing Nation by way of RPT. First of all, congratulations, champ, on a magnificent, impressive win. Thank you. An impressive victory. Now, I noticed that you invested in the body early. You know what I'm saying? Uh, do you think that took a toll on him? You know, like noticeably took a toll on him? Did it, did it cut some of his power off? Yeah, first off, I want to start off by saying I want to thank God. I'm I want to thank my team, my dad, uh, Eddie Hearn, uh, Matt Trim Boxing, DeZone, my whole team. Uh, it was a great training camp. Um, everyone played their part, so you know I want to thank all of them. And um, to your question, yeah, uh, I knew that he was a, a southpaw, so the 
part of the game plan was to, you know, hit him with the right hand to the body. And uh, I felt like I did that, and he, he was slowing down. I could hear him breathing late in the fight. He was taking deep breaths. So, yeah, I do feel like the, the, the body attacks uh, did pay off late in the fight. But uh, the ref kept warning me about hitting him low, but he had his, uh, his cup was, was high. Like, you couldn't even see his belly button. That's how high his cup was. So I wasn't really hitting him low. But, yeah, I do feel like the body attack uh, paid off. Yeah, Miguel might have been able to fight you. You mentioned you mentioned the warnings that the ref gave you. Did it concern you any time during throughout the fight that he was in a deductive point? Yeah, of course. You know, when, whenever the ref you know warns you, you know, more than one time, you do think that you know, as you start to think like, oh, I don't want to do it because I don't want to do that again because I don't want the ref to take a point. Yeah. Uh, boxing King Media. Devin, have you shown great loyalty for putting in three big fights back to back? I know this is a fight by fight deal. Is this relationship going to continue, or are you going to wait for your options? Of course, you know. <laughs> of course, you know. Um, Eddie Hearn believed in me when you know uh, a lot of people didn't. So of course, you know, I, I want to you know ha have my whole career with uh, Eddie Hearn. You know, he's you know done a lot for me, and uh, I couldn't thank him enough. Um, well, obviously, I mean, the fight with Linares, Linares hurt me. It was, it was obvious that uh, I got hurt in that fight. But in this fight, uh, I wasn't hurt at all. Um, his pressure his pressure was much more than Linares, but his punching power wasn't as hard. Mike? Kevin, congratulations on the great performance. Thanks, Mike. Uh, first off, you know, a lot of people used to have the knock on you was, oh, Kevin's in boring fights. Not mm -hmm. even two really exciting fights, back to back. Yeah. At what point do people have to call you an exciting fighter? Yeah, um, I, I definitely think that uh, I showed that I'm an exciting fighter once again tonight. Um, you know, some people say that all I do is run in there, but in times I, I, I wasn't running at all. But uh, in there, we got into some great exchanges, and I wasn't shy to to exchange with him. So I think it was a very entertaining fight. The crowd was, was on their feet from round one and round 12. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, how important is it to be an exciting action fighter? Because you, we all know that you could make it easier probably if you wanted to, but this is an entertaining sport. It's entertaining at the end of the day, right? Yeah, um, of course. I always want to you know, entertain the fans. I want the fans to be happy with, uh, with, with the fight that I put on. But, uh, you know, styles make fights, and sometimes, you know, you, you fight different ways to, to get the win. But I felt like I, I fought a very exciting fight tonight and uh, got the win. Thank you, thank you. Uh, how would you assess your performance tonight, and did Jojo Diaz do anything that surprised you? Um, I thought I, I put on a good performance. Um, of course, you know, the best way to win in, in the ring is, is a knockout, and I, hurt, I did hurt him a few times in the fight, but I went in there. Um, people forget that I'm still 23 years old. That's my third world, uh, former world champion in a row. Jojo Diaz didn't lose his belt uh, at 130. He, he didn't make weight. So he's coming at, off the biggest win of his career against Javier Fortuna. Uh, and he walked Javier Fortuna down the, the whole fight. So um, he has experience. He's, he's, and I just feel like he brought the best out of me. So uh, I'm happy with, with my performance. And uh, we got the win. So now we on to the next. Champ side, uh, Dev, the crowd often, you know, they'll react if they see a certain shot. So it looked like a lot of the shots weren't really landing and clean. How do you, do you even hear the crowd when you're in the yeah, ring? Yeah, yeah. Um, I do agree with that. You know, the crowd was going crazy sometimes when he was just hitting, like, my arms or, or gloves or even missing sometimes. But uh, it's part of the game, you know. Um, at the end of the day, the, the crowd can't win the fight for him, and uh, the scorecard showed. All right. Congratulations, Dev, on your victory. Thank you. Uh, town Business Sports and Entertainment. Yes, sir. Town I know business. you guys want to rest, but what's the time frame we could possibly get the undisputed with you and Cambosa? Uh, I think, obviously, both come off tough fights. Cambosa's a tougher fight. Got marked up pretty bad. And uh, I think that, realistically, we're looking at probably something around May time. I mean, I'd like to see Devin take a nice break, get back in camp maybe early February. But also, the only other issue we have to resolve is the traveling issue. You know, see what happens with the pandemic. Right now, we can enter uh, certain parts of Australia with no uh, quarantine. That could change. That could improve. But really, now it's about speaking to the Australian government. We don't, we don't, by the way, rule out the fact of doing the fight in America. 
or in the Middle East or anywhere. You know, it's the undisputed championship and that's, that's a big pull for many different regions around the world. But we'll explore all of those, present them to Devin and obviously present them to George Cambos as his team as well. But we don't, you know, it's not just we're packing our bags to go to Australia. That's, that's where George would like to do it. We have to be represented probably in this situation as well and make sure it's the right position for Devin Haney to be in. There, there may be many options for this fight, but I, I think realistically, end of April earliest, but May is probably the time for the undisputed fight. Uh, Rich, can you talk about the uh, franchise belt? Um, what is that? I don't even know what the franchise belt is. <laughs> no, really, this franchise title, I don't even know what the franchise belt is. I don't, I've never even seen the franchise belt. One thing that's really important about the franchise, and Maurizio Suleiman doesn't like me, and I respect Maurizio Suleiman, I love Maurizio Suleiman, but the situation is very, very clear. You cannot unify with a franchise belt. Therefore, it is absolutely impossible to be undisputed with a belt that you cannot unify with. And you guys have got to understand that. You understand that, Mike? It doesn't matter about the sanction fees. Forget the sanction fees. I'm just saying that Maurizio will say George Cambos is undisputed. The other governing bodies, you cannot unify with a franchise belt. Therefore, you cannot. And I'm not saying he shouldn't be undisputed. We should have fought Lomachenko a year ago. And Devin, when, he, when we looked at a route for the championships, and this was another reason that actually it sidelined us, because I said to Devin Haney, who do you want to fight? And he said, Vasily Lomachenko. We carved out a route to go after Vasily Lomachenko for the WBC title. He became his mandatory. Top rank wanted to avoid Devin Haney, and they requested he be made franchise champion. Lomachenko didn't. And, and with all due respect, uh, when I do fight for the uh, undisputed, I don't even I don't want the franchise title. I don't want anything franchise attached to me. At the end of the day, um, I will be fighting for the WBC belt, and uh, they can keep the franchise. If Cambosos wants to keep the franchise, go ahead. Well, originally you couldn't win the franchise. Now it's changed place. Uh, look, you know, Maurice Sullivan does a, a huge amount for boxing. We won't always agree with him, and I'll always argue with him, but. You know, he is, he does do a lot of good things for boxing on this situation. It's just that George Cambos is, is not undisputed. He, he, maybe he deserves to be. Maybe, you know, TFE might be, but he's not. And it's the only way we can settle it, is to make this fight. Eddie and Devin, um, if you could both chime in on this. Uh, you, Devin, do you get the sense that you feel that you are going to get that fight with George? I know he, he mentioned, hey, open the checkbook, I have a lot of options, but do you... Um, of course, you know, I'm going, I'm, I'm definitely thinking positive. Um, I do think that George wants to fight. I think that he wants to test himself. Um, but at the end of the day, talk is cheap. We can say uh, what you want to do and what you want to do. But at the end of the day, if we don't make the fight happen, then, then what? We'll, we have to you know, make the fight happen and then it won't be no more talk. And the fight is easy to be, to be made. He says he wants it. I say I want it. I just fought, he just fought, so we're, we're both open, our schedule is both clear to fight each other, so I think we're on a collision course. The, the one thing I'll say as well, come back to your question, is we also have options, and that's what's changed over the last year particularly. A fight with Ryan Garcia is a massive fight if he gets himself back together. Tank Davis is a fight he will take, you know, in time, who knows, T.O. Lomachenko's fighting in a couple of weeks. We just want to be undisputed, and, and for a long time it looked like we were frozen out of everywhere. Now he's one fight away from being undisputed. But he has plenty of options as well. What was your next question? Uh, you, you, I, I was going to ask if you had a contingency plan, but you yeah. just listed Loads options. of options. I've always felt, don't forget, that Ryan Garcia fought a final eliminator to fight Devin Haney. And again, you guys never really question him on that either. I have a question for uh, your, your father, Bill, who was working your corner. What was your uh, analysis on the fight? And because we were in the crowd, what was your direction to Devin throughout the fight? Well, thank, thank you, Chance Ida. Thank you, uh, uh, Match Room Zone. And I want to thank Allah for uh, blessing us uh, with a great victory on Billy Lock. Um, Jojo Diaz came to fight. Uh, he, he, he came, he brought the dog, but another dog showed up. Um, couldn't be more proud of Devin and uh, what Jojo Diaz brought out of him. Um, you know, 
Devin is a, a fighter that is continually growing right before our eyes. So we must be patient uh, with his process. And, um, you know, it was, it was excellent. He made the adjustments at the right time. And I, like I said, I couldn't be more happy. Um, of course, you know, JoJo put up a hell of a fight. Uh, he didn't come to lay down. Uh, he he pl applied pressure, pressure in a way that Lenares didn't. Um, he was uh, very relentless. So it's not so much as what uh, we could have did more without me looking at the tapes. It's so much as uh, what JoJo didn't let him do. And it's a, a, you know, a testament to him. I've got a question over here. Maestro A from uh, Maestro A Boxing and NCP. I'd like you guys to just talk about what you accomplished here today as it relates to essentially clarity at 135 pounds. It wasn't long ago that people were saying that fights weren't happening in this division, much like at 147. Last two weeks, we've had all belts being contested on one network. So th that's a big deal. Could you guys talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, it's been a tremendous run for the zone. I'm, I'm a zone guy. I, I, all I see week in, week out is pay-per-view fights. And I think to be an American fight fan, you've got to be a stock market trader or an oil tycoon to pay for all these pay-per-view fights week in, week out. You've just had two tremendous fights of the year in the lightweight division with all the belts on the line as part of your monthly subscription. And I just think the zone is the, the best blessing for boxing. I think it's the ultimate destination for fight fans, uh, the ultimate value for money as well. And they're investing in fighters. And they have, you, know, you have to have a plan across divisions. And I think when you look at the lightweight division, although we've made two tremendous fights, think of the fights that are out there. Like, these guys are so young, they can fight each other two, three times. You know, Tia Fimo will be back, Lomachenko could be back, Ryan Garcia, Tank. You know, and the beauty is letting everybody fight everybody. And honestly, I can't, like, for the last two years nearly, Devin Haney has been asking for Lomachenko, Tia Fimo Lopez, Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis. And he said, and Bill has told me we will fight any of those guys now. That's two years. He was 21 when he was called in first fights. And I'm just pleased to see him getting the resume now that he did that because a lot of teams and a lot of managers and advisors, they, they don't want the tough fights. These guys want the tough fights and they're, 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 they're willing to go out of their way to make it happen. Well, Devin wants the tough fights. Can you talk about that, Devin? Yeah, um, I want to test myself. I want to fight the, the best fighters out there or the so-called best fighters in there, and it's shown. You know, any any guy that I've called out and they, they answered and I end up fighting them. You know, it's never been uh, any type of confusion or, you know, me backing out. Any guy that I called out and they were willing to fight me, I fought them. You know, Jojo Diaz is an uh, Olympian, a uh, full former Olympian. Um, he's former two-time world champion. He said, let's do it. I said, let's do it. We got the, we, we got the fight made, and it was simple as that. Same with Linares, uh, same with whoever else. You know, I, I want to fight George Kambosos. So the fight should be easy to be made. I want to fight the best fighters out there. And um, it's obvious. And you guys got to respect that. You, I, I feel like you guys don't, you know, accept it enough and, and, you know, speak about it enough that I am willing to fight the, the best fighters out there. I'm not ducking or dodging nobody. Yeah, I mean, listen, we, we came to the UK. I've never seen anything like it. We did a media day. I was, I was a bit worried. I bought an American fighter over. It was ages ago. It was over, well over a year ago, before the pandemic. And I was thinking, we'll do a media day. I wonder if anyone turned up. They were queuing down the street. I've never seen them day so busy. I'd actually like him to come over. Ben Algeri might be a bit close, but Chisora Parker in a couple of weeks come over to the UK. They love him in the UK. We would have done a big number on the zone tonight for our UK subscribers, and they, you know, UK fight fans, very, very uh, knowledgeable fight fans, and they know Devin Haney's for real. Well, I'm Jim Grand Garden Arena in this location has a history of having great fights and big fights. How do you feel about this particular event in your life at this point to be fighting here? Uh, I'm so grateful for for this opportunity. This is something that I've always dreamed of since a, a little kid. Me living in Vegas, you know, you don't know how many times I drove past the MGM or been in fights here at the MGM and just 
you know, imagine myself here. It was actually like when I was in the ring, like it was like deja vu, I swear. It was like, it was crazy. I feel like like I did it before, like I've been there, like I imagined it. And uh, I'm so grateful um, to, to be in this position, especially at a young age, 23 years old. Uh, very few have, have done it at this age. And, um, you know, uh, I couldn't thank God enough for it. Uh, a couple more questions, questions guys. Yeah. Uh, um, speaking of uh, George Gambosis Jr. and Tank Davis, they both, uh, George Gambosis said that he's going to attend Tank's fight tomorrow. Do you plan on attend attending Tank's fight tomorrow, too? No. Eddie, there's nothing about Tank Davis and Tank Davis fighting tomorrow. Do you think that that will be a factor for you? Well, I mean, your prime normally as a fighter comes in your late 20s, you know, depending on the weight class, and he's 23. And he's been fighting a long time earlier in his career in Mexico just because he was too young to fight here. Um, but now as I go back to the fights that he's he's been in, and also don't forget where he's been fighting. You know, he boxed at Staples Centre in front of 13, 14,000 that were there on the KSI night. He boxed the headline at Maryland as well. You know, he boxed at Madison Square Garden. He's headlined there in the theatre. He's headlined at Mandalay Bay. He's headlined uh, at the Hard Rock in Miami behind closed doors that time when we were in the pandemic. And now he's headlined at MGM. I mean, he's on a hell of a run. And when you look at, you tell me a young star, 23 years old, that's, that has the potential of Devin Haney. You know, and it's not potential, it's about having the ability and quality, but it's also about having the discipline. And discipline comes through being consistent. Consistency is the key to longevity in anything. And there aren't enough fighters these days who have the consistency and the work ethic to have to last in the game. You know, I'm not sure if you're going to see him at 30. When I mean, you see him, well, you know, seven years. Seven years. If you're fighting three times a year, it's 21 fights. So, I don't know. Listen, we'd, we'd love to... Uh, the, the, this is a very tough sport. The, the key is to achieve your dreams, achieve your legacy, make as much money as possible and walk away into the sunset. But I promise you, he's in boxing for the right things. He wants to make money, but he also has a dream to be a true great. Just following, Last up, one. Just following up on that, Eddie, it's not often that you have a US champion willing to travel overseas to either defend the title or, or unify one. Uh, Devin, what, can you talk about the importance of, of the undisputed title at 135 before you move up and, and your willingness to go abroad to, to get that title? Yeah, um, like I said before, 135 is not easy for me to make. Uh, it takes a lot of sacrifice and discipline that I'm willing to do for the big fights. Um, um, the biggest fight for me right now, I feel like, well, the most important fight for me right now, it may, may not be the biggest fight, but the most important fight for me right now is George Kambosos for the undisputed. This has always been a dream of mine. Uh, to be undisputed, and uh, you know that's a fight that I would love. But you know, if I can't get the the, the big fights at 135, uh, then I will go up to 140. And uh, my body's still growing, like I said before. I'm only 23 years old. Um, I'm growing, and um, if I can't get the big fights here, then I'll I'll move up. But my main focus right now is undisputed. Uh, I'm don't, I don't want anybody to think that. You know, they can just wait me out and uh, then I'll eventually go up. No, I'm going to press for these fights uh, for as long as I can. But if it just, these guys just won't fight me, then I'll go up to 140. Thank you to the media. Bill, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your seat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Congratulations, champ.